My name is Mnleti Sindlovu. I'm the chairman of MNSA Tennis. I'm one of the co-founders of MNSA Tennis. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Sindlovu, for your time. Yeah. Thank 20 you years time. celebration, uh, anniversary reflections, taking stock of the past two decades of MNS attorneys. Um, but I think let's take it right to the beginning. Um, and perhaps you can just share with us a little bit about your earlier life the young Mnleti Sindlovu, um, <laughs> where he grew up, and the interest that you had as a child that led you to study law. Okay, I was born in Chatterston in Nigel, but we then moved to Tudusa, and I grew up in Tudusa. So the, mm -hmm. the bulk of my time I spent in Tudusa, right? Um, I, I left school in Form 2, which is in in 2020 uh, language in 2020 language i think it's what grade 8 okay yeah, or grade okay. Eight, yeah grade 8 or, or, yeah or grade 10 something sure. like that. so i left full time school at that point without a metric all right um, i went to work at various places um, union carriage uh, i worked at checkers as a packer uh, 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 many many places, mm -hmm. right? Then uh, uh, I worked at Jontier Pty Ltd, which is a, a, a factory that uh, manufactures uh, agricultural uh, equipment, mm -hmm. right? tractors, plows, plants, and all those things, right? Mm -hmm. Whilst at Jontier, uh, uh, first I was retrenched at Jontier, mm -hmm. then I was fetched after six months uh, of being unemployed, mm -hmm. I was fetched and uh, <laughs> I got back at John G. I'd learned my lessons uh, that, uh, you know what, uh, you need to respect your, your, your work. Your employer, yeah. Your employ <laughs> employ employ employment, whatever. Mm -hmm. After a few months at John G., maybe after a year or so, I was then promoted to be a supervisor. Okay. I became a supervisor at the tractor department. Okay, there's also a whole story about John Gia. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a supervisor at the tractor department. Um, at that time, I think I was the only one without a tertiary education at the tractor department. Let's learn the, the Yes. At, at the tractor department, you could only work there if you had tertiary uh, 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 achievement or education or metric. Mm. Right. So I had worked with people who had resigned as teachers, uh, who were matriculants and all that, and I was the only one without a metric. Mm. But nonetheless, I became their supervisor. Mm. Right. Nineteen, uh, I think around 83, 84, you know, at the height of the unrest, I then went to a friend of mine and said, hey, this thing, man, of working here now, man, it doesn't make sense. Eh? Mm. Let's study metric privately. Mm -hmm. So we studied metric privately. So during the week, we'll go to one of the uh, high schools and we'll go there. After work, we'll go there and we'll study. Weekends, we'll go there and study. Saturday, Sunday, we'll eat uh, fat cakes, uh, mm. chips, and what if you know. That. To cut a long story short, uh, we got the results, I passed. Mm. But the problem was that I didn't get a, 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 a metric exemption. To so, get into university. To get into university. So then uh, I applied at VITS. Uh, uh, then VITS, um, I was advised that I can apply for metro uh, age exemption, mm. which I did, and I got it. So in 1986, I started at VITS. Okay. I started with BA Education. While doing BA education, final year, someone, a, a friend, um, in fact, one of the, the colleagues at VETS then said to me, no, I think you'll, you'll make a, a, a good lawyer. I think you must, you, okay. must, you must apply and do LLB. And I applied, uh, studied LLB, passed LLB, served my articles at, at Dyson Attorneys, became a, a partner, and then 2002, Sam and I started MNS Tennis. That's a beautiful story. Thank you so much. I'm interested in a lot of things, but I think because you're reflecting on MNS's 20th yeah, anniversary, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you mentioned that you did your articles at Dyson Attorneys, yeah. uh, we presume that was 
a white um, law firm? Yeah, yeah, you a white law firm, but David Dyson was a human rights uh, lawyer. A lawyer, yeah. 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 But I, I guess even the political climate at the time was still very, very white um, in yeah. a broad sense. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about that, you know, uh, getting into the legal uh, uh, fraternity at a time when it was largely white, but also the political environment was, you know, talking about things like transformation and inclusion yeah. and how you found yourself within that transition of our society within your profession. Okay, it was it was tough, uh, and, uh, and that's first first thing. Two, mm -hmm. as a candidate attorney at that time, you didn't earn a lot of money. Yeah, and I always say thanks to a company called Ku. Because immediately, yeah, cool, the, the the, 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 yeah, the baked beans, okay. yeah, yeah. Because um, immediately after I passed my board exam, I then looked for a job that can pay better than. You what I was, and, yeah, that uh, better than what I was earning. I was admitted at that time oh, as an okay. attorney. So I went to this interview, and it's the only interview I've ever went to in my entire life. Wow. Uh, and I came there, I was interviewed, I was unsuccessful. Mm. So I had no choice but to go back and be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and pay your dues, as you say. Yeah, so I went back, <laughs> uh, I became a lawyer, I was uh, promoted to... A, a partner mm. at Dyson, and the name of the firm changed to Dyson and Rover Attorneys. Sure, that's 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 the journey. That's the journey, and how but it started. That's how it started. And yeah. you, I mean, you basically got into law by chance. I'll, yeah. I'll say that mm. because somebody said you could do mm. well at mm. it. Mm. Mm. At what point did you fall in love with the law? I, since then, I have. I can't think of any other thing that I can do other than law. Is it? Uh, uh, I really can't, you know, law is so interesting, it's amazing. Mm. Every day it's got, like, different challenges, like... No two days are the same. No, even even when you are bored and you just read a case, the way it's written, the, 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 the interpretation of the law by the judges, mm. uh, it's worse if it's Supreme Court of Appeal or Constitutional Court. Then, you, you, you know, it's, no, I can't think of any other thing that I can do other than law. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So it's a pity none of my kids is following <laughs> in that same footsteps, but maybe one, one day, one, one day, yeah, one, we'll yeah, one, on yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Now, m and Attorneys is born. You yeah. became a partner at yeah. your, your previous employer. Yeah. Um, then what actually catalyzed that entrepreneurial desire out of you to go and own your own law firm? Um, just in terms of you and your path mapping of your own career. Yeah. What 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 catalyzed M and S attorneys for you? So, just before two thousand and two, the f the firm was having a bit of cash flow challenges. Okay. And then, as directors, we were uh, requested to uh, reinvest in the firm. Mm. And I remember I then said to Tiamo, rather than and we, I think we all we were each required to raise about two hundred thousand. I said, rather than putting my 200,000 here, I can rather start something new. Okay. So that's how we started MNS. And that's how MNS, you know, uh, Came grew. To third. Yeah. Came to third. yeah. So it was Samo, myself, and my PE. Okay. Uh, I don't know where she is now, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, I wish her well. Uh, she, she, she was a very good PA. Uh, mm -hmm. Peg, I think her name was Peggy Trollip. Okay. Yeah. We must try to find Peggy Trollope on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, give, to make her watch this. <laughs> um, so then uh, m and Attorneys is born out of that. Now, you've always been quite resourceful, uh, it seems, just in terms of how you, you, you map out your life. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I assume it needs a lot of courage to start your own business. And, and, yeah. and as much as you had probably learned the ropes at you know, the previous mm -hmm. firm, mm -hmm. uh, but to actually go on it on your own is a different story. Yeah. Tell me about, just give me a picture. When you and Mr. Tiamo are painting this picture and you've got this big dream and you've got 200,000 rand or wh however much money you've got to start investing or sowing that seed. How was m and back then? How was it born? How big was the office? Was there an office? Um, yeah. You know? Okay, so there were uh, offices. There was an office. Uh, so we moved in on the 1st of May. Mm -hmm. It was a holiday. But that's when we opened the doors of MNS Satanis, mm. right? There was a gentleman, I don't know whether he's still there, who 
whose business was to rent out things like laptops, uh, 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 not office laptop, equipment, uh, office equipment mm. you know, dining, uh, I mean, uh, uh, boardroom chairs, mm. office chairs, uh, computers, you know, uh, all those things. So we had gotten to know about him. Mm. So on the 1st of May, he brought the stuff. Mm. And also, I had also signed the lease mm. with the landlord. So th we've got the keys, uh, we've got um, stuff that is coming in, the Computers are set, are being set, and blah, blah, blah. So first day of MNS is one May. That's when we started. That's when we open our doors, uh, office. That's when we open our office and said, yeah, we're starting our, 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 our firm now. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. It's never been easy. Uh, it's difficult. You know, you must convince clients that you're capable of doing work outside the brand that had already been created. Yeah. Right, you are starting a new brand, uh, and it was just immediately after uh, 1994, mm. and the perceptions about black law firms and black lawyers was still fresh yes. in many people's yes. minds. People thought, no, uh, black lawyers and black law firms, you know, are not capable of doing other areas of the law. Mm. But one thing that we knew with Sam is that if we work hard and we focus on quality and time is a deliver of quality. The business will sell, will sell itself, yeah. and that's what we did. We worked, we worked, we worked very hard. The other day, someone was printing. He had printed for me, and I wish uh, we we can show it here in one of the days. Mm. Our first professional meeting, matters that were supposed to be handled that were to be handled by me, mm. and matters that were handled by him. Mm -hmm. So, the minutes that I, 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 I stating states that. It is MN, here are the matters. TS, here, here are the matters. So it was the first professional meeting that we had, and you handle this one, you do, you do this one. How is it going and all that? And, all that. and there's a difference between being employed and running your own business, right? And we speak about that first professional meeting. Yeah. How did you guys actually find that synergy and evolve into being entrepreneurs that practice the law? Uh, how, was that challenging? How did you find your style? Of doing business. Okay, what I what I've realized that uh, that is important in life is compatibility, mm. uh, compatibility and respect. So Tiama and I are, are compatible. Um, you know, there are few people that I don't have to convince a, a, yeah. that much in life. It's Tiamo, it's Mandland Rover, my brother. You know, we, we most of the time like think alike. You know, even we're before, aligned. yeah, we're aligned. You know, you know, I'll go to Mandel and say, hey, Mandel, you know, this is what I was thinking about the female. So, no, 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 that's exactly what I was thinking. And Tiamo as well, you know, most of the time we are, we are aligned. So it makes it easy to run business. Mm. Two, there's respect. Yeah. You know, we respect each other. There's never been a day where we don't talk to each other or we don't greet each other. Wow. There's never been a day at MNS where Tiamo and I are not in talking terms, right? Mm -hmm. Two, we, we then told ourselves there'll, there'll never be a crisis. Anything, any challenge that is there, we will be able to resolve. Mm. We've always told ourselves, no, we will resolve it. <laughs> we will resolve any challenge that we have, we will resolve. And we've had serious challenges, you know, mm. of uh, people resigning and what if you, you know, uh, directors that we try to bring in who are not com uh, compatible, uh, but now we have a group of exco that works very well together, mm. very, very, very well together. So yeah, it all starts from the respect that Simon gives me and the respect that I give him. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier even for other people to respect me because they can see that the managing director mm. respects this man. The that you yeah, yeah, so there's, 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 there should be something special about him and, and all that, yes. And you know with organizational culture, it's top-down. Yes, So yes, whatever yes, yes. is happening at the top yes. translates to yes. the business yes. and, and yeah. the culture within yes. the business. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, you started the two of you and your PA, but yeah. then the, as the capacity grew, yeah. you were able to employ yeah. so, and bring legal professions, professions yeah, into yeah. the space. So the PA decided to disappear one day. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and she ghosted us. <laughs> she... She was very well overworked, to okay. be honest. So she decided, boom, she goes. Mm. Then we got Namsa Sanguin. Mm. 
Okay, okay. The one or two other people that I got Namsa Sangweni came in. She stayed with us until she passed on. Mm. She was the pillar of the administration within the, the firm and other people came in. There's a lady called Mbai. Uh, uh, Mbai was the of like responsible for drinks and mm. you, uh, you know ex, you know hospitality. hospitality in the firm yeah. and, and all that yeah so now she retired she worked with us until she retired she was also a mother-like figure because mm. she will guide the young uh, uh, colleagues to say no don't do this mm. you know Mwe is not going to uh, like what you're doing and what if you and all that so yeah uh, you mentioned that Mom Nomsa Sangweni, and yeah. it's interesting, one of your boardrooms yes. is, is, I presume, named in her honor. Yes, the, uh, one of the boardrooms is named uh, uh, after her. Yeah. Uh, but we also had a, we had other good colleagues. Uh, mm. There's Mom Pomo Matsumi, mm. uh, whom we still have to, you know, uh, honor. And uh, commemorate. Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but for me, what is quite fascinating about that, you speak about these motherly figures, yeah. this nurturing uh, energy within the business, yeah. um, and people who left a mark in a positive yeah. way. Yeah. Now, you know, a lot of professionals, particularly black young professionals, um, have some sort of aversion towards the establishment. And when I say that, I mean large corporate South Africa. Yeah. Um, and that's due to a number of things, you know, the microaggressions, feeling excluded, and sometimes not feeling like you can express yourself fully yeah. or come as you are into the workplace. Mm -hmm. And as you watch people, you know, walk in and out of, you know, the office, the m &S attorney's office, young professionals who are thriving and you watch them in that comfort yeah. um, and feeling empowered to take on, you know, the work and the tasks. Yeah. Was that intentional to create? And, and I, I presume it was, but what, what was the thinking behind that? And in terms of you even starting a business and to think of what it represents for young black professionals. Yeah. So uh, I think the first thing was to, prove to the world that black attorneys can make it as well. Mm. So it was to show that, you know, um, black people are as capable as other nationalities as yeah. well, you know. So that was the first thing to say, as black people, we can, we can make it, we mm. can make it. Black excellence, black excellence and all that. Two is to, is to inculcate this culture of hard working mm. to make sure that you know young people work hard and that this and they stay disciplined but the other interesting thing about mns is the freedom of expression in terms of the looks mm. you know uh, there's a lot of swag <laughs> at <laughs> mns uh, mm. uh, people know that uh, that uh, you know uh, people at mns you know uh, uh, they look good. They look good, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and we encourage it, you know, we encourage it to say, you must look good, you know, you, you know, uh, be smart, yeah, be, you know, freedom of expression within, you know, professionalism, you know, if you want to dress expensively, it's up to you. If you want to dress uh, 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 reasonably, but look good, it's still up to you. You know, uh, uh, no one is going to say no, no. Then it means you owe, you 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 earn a lot of money. Uh, uh, that's why you, you cannot. No, no, you. But if you want to buy a car, you buy a car. I think almost everyone at Eminence has got a car. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, let me just think. Ninety-nine percent wow. of of the people at Eminence have cars. I'm telling you about whether he's a filing clerk, mm -hmm. whether whether. He, Ninety-nine percent of the people that is, that is a huge, at MNS have, have, have cars. They drive themselves. Mm. To, yeah, yeah. They have cars. They've got homes. You know. Yeah. That's beautiful. And yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking about if you know, yeah, professionals will always speak about the gender pay gap or the race pay gap, um, and all these things that speak against them self-determining yeah. from a finance perspective. Yeah. Uh, and when you speak about black excellence and you yeah. speak about restoring the dignity of black professionals and yeah. people, yeah. Um, you know, what, what that does that drive you in, in, in being able to see that, 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 that embodiment of, of success in yourself? Yes, it, it drives us. Um, I, I'm one of the people that when I help someone, I get very happy. Mm. I, you know, I, I like, I plan it that if, if I can help Spongil, I know I'm going to be happy, you know. And you, and you already feel that excitement going happen. <laughs> so, yeah. so sometimes people take advantage mm. of my generosity, but um, 
you know, it's, it makes you feel good. yeah, sometimes it's the price you must pay. And it's part yeah, of the purpose. Yeah, so to, to empower and to assist other people is part of, is part of me. You know, mm. so even to assist my colleagues to make sure that you know they they drive uh, cars, they have homes, and all that, it's part of my. I take it as my responsibility. Mm. Uh, and an extension of your own philosophy yeah, around sure. black yeah, success. Yeah, yeah. Now let's get into just some of those key uh, professional milestones uh, yeah. over the past twenty years. Yeah. Um, one that you pride yourselves in as a as a as a, as a firm is. Uh, the forensic investigations that you, you, you worked on into the Transnet 1064 project, yeah. um, as well as for the city of Johannesburg and the yeah. Department of Cooperative Governments and Traditional Affairs. Yeah. Now, I mean, these are big, you know, uh, projects and big clients. Yeah. Um, and kind of pushing through those glass ceilings to get to that level of trust, uh, but also to work on such large and complex matters. Yeah. Uh, what did it signify for you for the growth of m and attorneys? And, and, and what, what are your takeouts from, from some of those key cases that you're proud of? Okay, so it meant that our, our efforts are being recognized mm. as, as, as a black law firm. It, number one, it meant that. Two, it meant that uh, there are other people who believe in black people, yeah. who believe that black people are as capable as other nationalities. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we then told ourselves that we can't let those people down, mm -hmm. whatever it takes. I mean, uh, Transnet is one of the matters that really stretched us mm -hmm. in terms of um, capacity within the office. Uh, in terms of knowledge of the law and what have you. If you read, I mean, uh, some of the Judge Zondo reports mm -hmm. are based on our investigations. Yeah. And very few people have been able, if any, have been able to, cha to challenge the content of the report. Mm. No, 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 no. Not, whatever we put in there as the law is the law. And Judge Zondo has confirmed it, has affirmed our reports. Uh, 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 currently, we are instituting review applications to set aside the contracts. Yeah. It's one of the biggest cases in the country. It's one of the biggest, if not the big case. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, the founding of David on its own uh, uh, of, uh, 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 of transnet people is about 1,000 pages, mm. without the annexures. The annexures I'm talking about, I, mean, I don't know, no. lots and lots no. and lots yeah. of annexures. They, mm. the, the court can't handle it. It's too much, you the know, volumes. yeah, the volumes, yeah. yeah. People slept, people were sleeping here. Wow. Uh, I'm telling you, weekends, they would work on these things. Sleep. I remember one day I came on a Monday, we, we had to go and buy things for the ladies because they had slept here. Oh, wow. Believe me, because the deadline, they had to ch be chasing, the, they had slept here, people were in shorts, uh, sneakers, they came, and it was not only Sunday, even on Saturday, mm. they, they worked until early hours, they came back on Sunday, they worked, and yeah, the whole night. Wow. So they had to go and a day off and uh, take you know some get some rest and, and all that so that's how the transnet cases uh, stretched us mm. but other than that there are many other matters that we we have handled very well mm. we we pride ourselves for having done the governance framework for the city of Johannesburg mm. remember city of Johannesburg has got entities so there was a challenge between the head office and the entities, how to govern each other and all that. So we drafted the governance framework for the city of Johannesburg. And I remember I presented it at the mayoral committee and everyone was there, you know, and, and all that. So there are quite a number of uh, uh, big uh, instructions that we've had handled as MNS attorneys. And I mean, congratulations on those milestones because they also speak to the social impact that yeah. some of the work that you do, in fact, the work that you do yeah. has on society. Yeah. And if you were speaking to a young articles clerk who walks into MS attorneys for the first time and 
they just think they're going to be here to be a top shop lawyer. Yeah. Um, what life of advice would you give them on the intersections between the work and always doing it through a lens of social impact as a, as a responsibility that I think black professionals have? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, so one of the things that we tell our professionals is that MNS is a university. That's one of the things that we tell them, that you can come here, humble yourself, you will learn mm. and work hard, mm. you know, and you will learn because there's various areas of the law. Uh, and uh, the only weakness at MNS is that if you don't work hard, you are left behind. Yeah. So if I need a, a, something to be done urgently and I know that you don't work hard, then I overlook you and then I go to someone that is going to give me yes, they are always going to give me this document at this time and it, it, almost good and all that. So that's the only problem that once uh, uh, you lag behind, then you, you go further, further, further down. Yeah. Uh, but you need to, we try and we coach you, we mentor you. But sometimes, you know, we can only do so much. The hunger to succeed, the drive. The drive. Because yeah. the horse is bolted. Yes. 20 years on. Yeah. Um, and as we cast our eyes into the future, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Ndobo, how does the future for you, what are your hopes for MNS uh, for the next decades? Okay, it's, it's, it's proper succession. Uh, proper succession in the sense that we know that uh, some of us very soon mm -hmm. must uh, move to the side. Mm -hmm. and others must take over. Fortunately, we do have extremely capable uh, people mm -hmm. on the sides already. Fortunately, we have young and capable people, the likes of Mandla. I'm not counting Tsiyama because... Mandla Mnesi, Tobane Mnyandu, Ufeziwe Pungula, you know, Kanabos Kosana, Zianda, Tami, Nkosentle. Those are fairly young uh, people, and believe me, given the responsibility and to lead and to, they can do it very well. So the, the, the challenge is to, is to get more work, is to build the brand, mm -hmm. is to do good work, time yearly for clients. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, the, that's the challenge. And uh, people like you guys, uh, Boni, uh, Bongile, and everyone else are assisting us mm. to strengthen the brand, to to build the brand, uh, and, and that's what. This beautiful story. And to tell the that story. That symbolizes a lot uh, about the resilience of this country. Yeah, but we must still remain modest. Mm. We must remain modest. The 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 road ahead is still very long. Mm. Uh, 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 the one mistake is to think that uh, you know what we've arrived. we've arrived. No, 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 no. Uh, no, we are still far from it.